In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to start and scale to 10K a month as a growth operator in 2024. This is a full length, in-depth growth operating course for free. Growth operating has completely changed my life and has allowed me to go from broke and living with roaches just a few years ago to now making over $100,000 profit per month at the age of 19 years old. Growth operating has not only changed my life, but has also changed Justin's life, who went from zero to 14.5K per month growth operating in a month and a half. James Neiser is a 17 year old who started running a paid community and got to 20 K per month in just a few months and was able to buy himself a Tesla at 17. Andrea started a paid community and got to 20K per month in less than 60 days. And Kyle got to 22K per month in three months. And there has been dozens of other growth operators who have completely changed their life. This information in this free course has the power to completely alter the course of your life. So make sure to buckle up, lock in and get ready to learn. This is gonna be my longest video yet. And there is a ton of value here. So make sure you take notes and get rid of all distractions while going through this free course. Before I get into it, I'm going to be giving away a massive gift at the end of my next free class. So go ahead and register down below for my free class every week where I teach you how to start and scale a growth operating business live and answer questions live. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get into it. What is growth operating? This business model is essentially just partnering with the creator to launch and scale a paid community. And this could be a community around literally anything. And it's typically just around whatever the creator is making content about. But there's fitness communities out there like sports, nutrition, making money online, investing, there's tons and tons of niches and I'll actually just go ahead and show you some examples you can head over to school and take a look at some of the communities out there. This is my free community. There's tons and tons of communities out there in so many different niches. Hamza here is a YouTuber who's running a community. I believe he's making over 20K per month from this community. It looks like he went down a bit in members. He was making 20K from this one. He's another one that's bringing him around 80K per month as well. There's tons of communities like this one right here is the community that I run that makes me over 100K per month. There's literally communities in any niche. The gist of this business model is you find an educational creator on TikTok and Instagram and you partner with them, build a paid community for their audience. You're going to run the back end while they focus on making content. And the reason that you're partnering with the creator instead of making content yourself is you probably don't already have an audience. And even if you do have an audience, you don't have the experience to sell your own info. And so you're basically working with the creator and helping them monetize their audience and their experience that they're not tapping into. So you're able to leverage someone who has tons and tons of experience and tons of attention. And you're able to use that for yourself to then launch your own business with them and monetize that audience. Typically, if you're working with an audience, 1% typically becomes a buyer. So that means a creator with a hundred thousand followers has about a thousand buyers in their audience and this rule is honestly really conservative because the first paid community that I ever ran in high school the audience that we were working with was like 96,000 followers and we were able to sell 2,000 people access to it for $75 per month over the span of my senior year of high school which is actually two percent the one percent rule is pretty conservative but it's a good baseline to use when trying to figure out how much you can make working with a certain creator this is the best business model to start in 2024 2025 whenever you're watching this video anyone could do this as a complete beginner like I did this in high school is the first thing that ever made me money and I made $263,000 as a complete beginner. You get to access the power of the content economy without having to make content yourself, which means you get to tap into tons of attention without ever having to build your own personal brand or put yourself out there. There's zero startup costs with this business. I'm going to show you exactly how you can do this with zero startup costs. You can do this from anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter if you're in a third world country and paid communities are the most profitable thing you could sell because instead of selling a digital product, like running an e-com business, or you're going to go sell, like say, for example, these blue light blockers, instead of selling these blue light blockers, let's say you sell these for $100. Every time you sell one of these, you're going to have to pay $20 to make them or whatever it may be, plus shipping, whatever. So your margins instantly with physical products are already cut. They're already lower. And then you're going to have margins for scaling, fulfillment, all of that stuff. Paid communities is a digital product. You build it once and there's really not many expenses at all. And then once you start selling it, there's no expenses and no fulfillment at all. The fulfillment is really not a ton and I'm going to get into that as well. And once they're set up, they don't require a ton of work. My community takes me about five hours of management and I really only put in about about two hours of focused work per day to maintain making 100K profit per month. What type of creators should you work with with growth operating? The most ideal creators are educational creators because that just makes the most sense for a paid community. There's gonna be info in there. You might be building out a course. And so having a creator that educates their audience makes the most sense. And there's tons of creators out there. Here's some examples. There's fitness, athletic, sports, nutrition, make money online, entrepreneurship, investment, e-com, dating, language learning, parenting, home improvement, and the list goes on. But what you can't work with are one OF girls, meme pages, and other types of brand dead creators. I would stay away from creators that don't show their face and aren't building a personal brand. You want to work with someone who's building a personal brand and educating some way. You don't want to work with creators that are out there just making content or just gaining an audience for the wrong reason. Like people that just look good and they just have followers because they look good or because they're doing trends relatable stuff. You want to work with creators who are providing value and educating their audience. And then another thing that you can look out for when deciding what type of creator to work
work with is their pain. Are they solving a problem? So a good example of this is like fitness. Fitness is a good niche. Let's say you're working with the creator that helps people lose weight. Their audience has a lot of pain. Like if you're overweight and you're watching content about how to lose weight, you're watching that because you have pain. You don't like being fat and you want to stop being fat. Same thing with the relationship niche. A lot of people go through a lot of pain through breakups or divorce. A lot of those offers typically do really well because there's a lot of pain within the audience. And so that gives them a reason. It gives them motivation to go seeking for help from like a community like this to get out of that pain. And so some key things to look for, educational, personal brand, and some type of pain that they're solving, some type of problem that they're solving. By size, you wanna ideally work with a creator that has at least 10,000 followers. That means you're working with micro creators. You don't wanna work with Nano just because there's not enough people in the audience. Remember the 1% rule. If you're working with someone with at least 10,000 followers, that gives you enough buyers to make at least 10K per month. Now, it's not saying that you can't work with a creator below that and making money. I actually have a student inside of my community who has, I think like eight or 9,000 followers and he's making 20K per month. Ideally, you wanna work with someone with, I would aim for 100,000 followers at least. And obviously the more the merrier, right? If you work with a creator with a massive audience, you're gonna have the opportunity to make a lot of money. Just make your baseline 10K. You're gonna be looking for creators with at least 10,000 followers. Now there's also creators you can look for that already have an offer, which is more advanced. And these guys have some type of business that they're already running. And that means they have some type of existing experience. And the best operators get these clients that make the most money. Fortunately, I was able to work with one of these creators when I first got started. He had, let's see, he was making 7,500 a month already from his Discord. And we partnered with him and we actually scaled him to 87K a month within 60 days. And that's how I was able to make 10 to 15K a month all throughout high school. He already had a Discord running that wasn't doing the best. We took it, revamped it, built our own version of it to fit the TikTok funnel, and we printed off of it. Now, you wanna be looking for creators with at least 10,000 followers that have a personal brand that are educating their audience, some type of pain. And I mean, I think honestly, ideally, they don't already have an offer because those people will be easier to get to agree to work with you, and they'll be less likely to ask you about your past experience because you guys are both in the same position where you don't have any experience. They have no experience running a business, you have no experience running a business. Maybe you do. And if you have some experience that gives you even more leverage and it'll make it even likely for you to be able to land them and go ahead and close them and start working with them. How to find creators. So you want to think about where does your ideal creator client hang out and what would be the best place to reach them? And so literally just on social media, Instagram, like me personally, I spend most of my time on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Although reaching me on YouTube would probably be hard. I'm not sure how you would reach your creator on YouTube. You could do it. Creators have their emails on YouTube. You can hit them on the Instagram DMs, comment on their Insta, hit them on Twitter. Creators have their email in their bio. And then another place that creators hang out is is in free communities, which is super, super underrated. I actually found my first client when I was in high school a few years ago through a Discord. I posted in a Discord group and we connected there. There's creators all over. There might be Discord specifically for creators or creators in whatever niche you're targeting. Facebook groups, Discord, school. School's great. Like I have a massive school with about 30,000 people in there. There's creators in there looking for operators all the time. Paid communities as well is super underrated. These will be even higher quality leads because they are invested in whatever the community is about. And then there's this cool creator search engine that you can use. There's a ton of them out there like this one, findcreators.io. Let's say that I was looking for like fitness creator, right? Like I said, you wanna look for creators with at least 10,000 followers. So you can actually filter by followers here. So I'll put minimum 10,000 and filter there. And then I can search for fitness. And when I do that, and click search, it's gonna search and it's gonna give me tons of creators. So 15,000 followers, 30,000 followers. I can click on view profile, it'll take me to their IG. 15K, fitness nutrition coach. So it looks like she already has an offer. She has her link tree, collaborations, discovery. So she's doing some type of coaching. So a community should print with the community. That's a decent person to reach out to. It looks like she's selling high ticket first and not running a community funnel. This website, tons and tons of creators here. There's tons of ways to find creators. Honestly, there's 200 million creators out there. So finding one out of 200 million should not be hard. To land a client, you need to do outreach. If you're familiar with other business models, you might understand how outreach works. Cool thing about growth operating is you only have to do outreach to land one client. This isn't like SMMA or freelancing or whatever other business model you've taken a look into where you have to do outreach to land a client. And then if you keep making money and continue making money, you have to keep landing clients consistently. Like when I was running my agency, I realized I was on like a hamster wheel of just like consistently having to close clients for my agency. If I wanted to keep making money and keep retaining clients, I needed new clients every single month. So it's constant outreach. With this business model, Really, you need to do outreach once. And once you land, you're creator, you're set, and you're done. Like I've been working with my business partner. Technically, I'm the creator now. My business partner, Brady Growth Operates. And we've been partners for three years now. He's not had to go find another creator. I haven't had to go find another growth operator. It's a long-term partnership that you're building here. It's not just a get rich quick thing or a quick, oh, I'm gonna work with this creator, run up a bag, and then dip. Like this is a long-term thing you're building. You only need one creator and you're set. With outreach, you need to have an offer that you're hitting people with for why they wanna work with you. And what you're not doing, you're not selling a 
a paid community. That's not what you're selling as a growth operator. You're selling a transformation where you're helping the creator go from broke. They have broken influencer syndrome. They have a big audience. They're not making any money from it, but they want to be making money from it. They want to be able to maybe quit their job, leave school and just focus on making content and rely on content as their main source of income. So you're actually selling the transformation of going from broke to 10K per month. You're going to take the creator from their current situation where they're at, broke influencer syndrome, no consistent income to a happy creator, which is their desired outcome, consistently making 10K per month personal take home profit. And the way that you're going to do that is with your offer. And it's not just a paid community that you're selling. You're selling the transformation. You're selling the fact that you're going to do everything for them and help them make that transformation. So that's your offer. Your offer has to be put in the middle of their current situation and their desired situation. And that's what you need to be thinking about when you're crafting your outreach message and doing your DMs. Their current situation, they need a consistent way to make money without relying on a single platform. They're afraid to monetize their audience alone. They don't have the business knowledge to craft offers, promote and sell customers. They don't know how to do it. Most creators don't. Some creators might, but maybe they're not the best fit for you because they are already at this dream situation. So you're looking for creators that are here and their desired situation is they will have a consistent way to make money without relying on a single platform. They know they'll never need a job again for the rest of their lives. And they're able to love what they do because they focus on content while the operator takes care of the rest of the business stuff for them. So right now I'm in a position where I'm the creator. My day to day is really just making content. And I did an interview with one of my students, Ira, who's working with another one of my students, Justin, in my paid community as a growth operator. And in this interview, she explained how she literally as a content creator now working with a growth operator, all she does is make content three days a week. And the other four days of her week, she just does whatever she wants. She's in South America right now. She travels around. That's the ideal situation for most of these creators. Just being able to focus on making content, everything on the back end taken care of. Like I'm in a position now as well, where I really just make content and my community runs. I hop on a few group calls per week and I answer some questions in there. But for the most part, most things are taken care of within the community. That's what you're selling as a growth operator. And it's a super, super powerful offer. And the creators will eat this up because it is just a no brainer offer. Like every creator needs a growth operator. Your offer essentially is all the content creator needs to do is make content. You'll do everything else on the back end and lead the business to high cash flow. And you'll take over things like sales assets, lead nurturing, sales, sales teams, most of product. You'll create the systems to effectively manage the business operations. You'll do everything for them. All they have to do is focus on making content. How much would you charge for something like this? Well, I would aim for 50% of the profit and ideally a $3,000 setup fee. You can lower or get rid of the setup fee if needed. So let's say you hop on a call with the creator, you go through the whole sales process, which I'm gonna teach you in a second, and you pitch them and you're like, okay, cool, Mr. Creator. So what I'll charge you for this is $3,000 and 50% of the profit. And let's say the creator is very, very invested. He wants to do this. He wants to work with you. He's just like, bro, I'll literally show you my bank account. I'm broke. Like I'm a broke creator. That's why you're reaching out to me. I don't have the money for this. Okay. How much do you have, Mr. Creator? And then just work with him, charge him however much he can afford and then take 50%. And then let's say that he doesn't even have $3,000, $1,000, $100. You don't even need a set of fee because you'll make a lot of money if they have a big audience. Just take the, the performance fee, the 50% on the back end. So like I said, you can lower or get rid of the setup fee as needed, but it's also a powerful tool that you can use to make the deal close. And I'm going to teach you that in a bit. Some examples of prices I've seen thousand dollars up front plus 50% of the profit. I've seen that I've seen $3,000 up front and 40% split. I've seen 66% of the profit. This is actually what I got when I was working with my first creator. It was me and my business partner growth operating for him. And it was basically like a three way split. If you think about it, because we're getting 66% and then me and Brady were splitting that. So it's 33, 33, 33. And I've also seen 50, 50. And I'll also show you, I'll just go ahead and take a peep into my community and just show you guys some of the wins. There is a creator 45, 55 split, 600K on TikTok, 50, 50, 250K, 500K whale with 60, 40 split. Raw Hill here got 5K up front with a 20% ref share on a small creator. And she actually did that through the last version of my YouTube course. This one is even more in depth and more fire. She was able to close a creator and got paid 5,000 up front and got a 20% rev share from doing this. And then she joined our paid community. And here's some proof as well. So $5,000 for three months plus 20% of revenue. You're able to charge 5K, which is pretty nuts. She could do it. Like there's creators out here doing it, paying set of fees right here. Dial on $1,500 set of fee plus a 3070 rev split, 400K on IG, 160 on TikTok. 19 on YouTube. Massive creator, 1500 set of fee. I think he got half up front. I think he's getting the other half eventually. I'm not sure. But yeah, just insane results. Massive whale. 3 million followers, 30, 70 rev share. He doesn't get a setup fee, but he closed a massive whale. And there's people doing all over the spectrum. It really depends on what the creator has. Now, ideally, like I said, you're looking to get a setup fee. It would be so nice if you're able to just do some reach outs, find a creator, hop on a call and charge them 3K. Setting up your Instagram for outreach. You can find creators everywhere and you wanna hit them everywhere as well. One of the first places that you're gonna hit creators is on Instagram. And the most important part of doing outreach is just making sure that you look like a human. Like you wanna avoid looking like a butt and you wanna come off as legitimate as possible. There's a lot of people out there doing outreach for 
whatever business model they may be doing. And a lot of them are not taking the time to just look like a human. That's really it. You just have to look legitimate. The first thing I do when I get a DM is take a look and I click on their account. And sometimes I don't even have to take a look at their account because I can just see they don't have a profile picture. And it's just like, okay, like this guy is not a real person or if they are, they're not someone that I even want to spend the time looking at because they just don't even seem like a person. Like people trust people. A must have checklist that I would personally recommend having is a clear profile picture with your face in it. Now I know I do say that as a growth operator, you don't really need to show your face out there. You don't have to make content for sure, but just putting your face in your profile picture would help you so much. Having a clear bio that states what you do, I'll show you mine and then maybe I can find a few examples of good bios from growth operators. But yeah, building paid communities, 22K plus students printing as growth operators, free classes one day. Like you wanna keep it simple, you wanna make it clean and you wanna make it short. And you basically wanna explain what you do, who you up. So growth operator, helping creators monetize their audience, building paid communities, something like that, super simple, super clean, clear profile picture with your face in it. Very, very, very simple, right? Other things that you can do to improve your chances and prove the people that respond to you is having a few posts or reels on your account just to show that you're human. Like if you've already made content before or you're interested in making content, having some content up just to show that you're a real person, very, very, very good. Having story highlights that just show your life is also good. Like what I used to do was just post me in the gym, post me reading, post me meditating, just me working, just stuff like that. Just show that I'm a human, post some of my thoughts, some of my opinions on my story. And another thing that is very, very powerful that I would recommend doing, I really would recommend doing this if you can afford this. If not, it's all, all good. It's not necessary. Having the meta verify check mark will just instantly improve your chances of your outreach working and you getting a good reply rate. Like people know that you're buying the check marks. People are buying the check marks now, but it still is just like a, a symbol that like instantly will make you more likely to get responded to if you have that check mark. I would recommend doing that if you can. It's $15 a month. You can check if you have it. You might not even have access to buying it, but if you can, highly recommend it. Step three is actually doing outreach. You're going to be sending DMs and this is a proven script that has had success recently to land a whale client. Hey, Mr. Creator, whatever their name is, I may, whatever niche they're in, whatever their avatar is. So maybe like fitness, maybe I'm a gym rat and I love your content. How long have you been making content for? Wait for them to respond. And then once they respond, that's awesome. Congrats on the success. So are you currently monetizing your audience? If I may ask, I have a proposition that might be very interesting to you. So that's going to invoke intrigue. It's going to make them curious and then they'll respond. And then you kind of explain what you want to do with the paid community. Paid community could be very lucrative if done right. Typically the 1% rule says you can get at least 1% of your followers to buy from you with the right offer, of course. And then what you could do is some money math in their DM. So say creator that I was looking at a second ago, Hara, you say 15K followers. So what I would do is 15K followers times 1% of people equals 150 people and 150 people paying $100 a month. And we can likely double that easily as we more, add more value to the community would be, what's that, 15K per month? Boom, so money math, just to show them the potential, right? And then you say, I had operated 100% for you, help do market research, create the community, help create the offer and other lead generating assets, build slash optimize a free funnel or the funnel, close leads in the DMs and or on the phone, make posts, basically just explain the entire process, right? And you can, you can read through the script, you can pause this, write this down if you'd like. And then you could even mention that you don't even want a setup fee up front, but let's say that you do, I would recommend probably not including this so that whenever you hop on a sales call, you can pitch them and they won't be pre-framed on the fact that you want to set up a fee. But yeah, you could you could also mention this as well and then just be like, yo, so for this, I do want to charge you 50% of the profit, but I would also, I do take a set of fee typically for this and then just charge them up front for the set of fee. And then they're going to respond. So this right here, this sentence is very, very powerful. Is this worth having a conversation? Is this worth diving into deeper? Is the idea of this worth diving into deeper? And they're going to be like, yeah, this is worth, I'd be interested. Once they say yes, cool, would you be opposed? That's also very, very powerful using that wording where you're pushing them to say no instead of getting them to say yes do you want to? You're, you're asking, are, would you be opposed? Like, are you completely against hopping on a quick 15 minute call? And they're gonna be like, no, I'm not completely opposed to jumping on a quick 15 minute call. They're gonna respond to you. And this is very important. A lot of people will just send a calendar link or be like, when when works for you? Just like, when, when, when can you hop on a call? What you wanna do is give them two times. Literally just take a look at your calendar. And I'm gonna show you guys how to set up Calendly and all of that in one second. But what you wanna do is just take a look at your calendar, see when you are free, the slots that you wanna take them. So Mr. Creator does tomorrow at 3 p.m. or Friday at 2 p.m. work better for you. And that way you're making them choose a time. Like they're choosing a time and not really choosing a yes or no to your call. And so they're more likely to just be like, okay, I'll do the second one. And you remove as much friction as possible. So they'll give you the time that they prefer. And if they, one of the times that you give them doesn't work, then cool. Ask them another time or be like, when would it work for you? You can either send them the calendar link to the specific time and date that they mentioned or book in the call for them manually. And I would recommend doing that. Just asking them for their email and their phone number and then filling it in for them so they don't even have to do the work because that causes a lot of friction and a lot of people will disappear and ghost whenever they get to the point where they have to actually go do some work and type it in. But if you do it for them, it'll make it very easy, very hands-off. Or you can send them a calendar link with the specific date and time that they mentioned. And so let me go ahead and show you guys how to set up Calendly and Zoom. 
which is what you'll use to schedule in calls and book. So I logged in and I'm on here on Calendly. I think this is a fresh Calendly that I've never used. What you would do is you'd go ahead and you can connect your calendar here. Boom. And then you want to go home, integrations, here we go. Connect to Zoom, and then you log in on Zoom. Connected it, and now I can go ahead and create a call, right? Setting up calendar is very simple. That's literally all I have to do, go ahead and create a new event, one-on-one, -on -one, and then name it. You can make it like game plan, session with whatever your name is. Set it for 30 minutes, put it on Zoom, go ahead and continue setting it up. And then you can go ahead and choose your details for how you want it to do. So you can go ahead and enter in like um, 30 minute strategy session where we're gonna dive into monetizing, strategies for monetizing your audience with a paid community, something like that. You're gonna go ahead and choose the time that you want. I would recommend only making it so that they can book like four days into the future. After that, it's likely they're gonna no show you. And then you wanna choose the hours that you're available, whatever times you, you're free to take calls. Another thing that you wanna set up is text reminders. Here we go. I would turn on text and email reminders to make it more likely for them to show up, which looks like you actually need to pay for. If you could, would be recommended. It's not necessary though, but it'll help you with creators no showing you for the call. There's like templates on Calendly that you can use to send them texts like an hour before, then 30 minutes before, then right when the call is supposed to start. And if you're not gonna pay for it, no worries. What I would recommend is just going ahead and sending them text before the call is supposed to start. Manually, you can send them a DM on Instagram or if you get their number, go ahead and just shoot them a text so that you can remind them so they're, they're more likely to show up. We're watching this post pandemic, most people have used Zoom, but if you connect the Calendly to your Zoom account, it should already set up the meeting for you. You just have to click start when you log into Zoom. Like I can show you um, on my Zoom, I probably have a call coming up soon. And okay, I don't today. So typically there'd be like a meeting here, you just click start and then you hopped on and then the creator would join as well. And then you up on a sales call with them. You're having a call with them. Let's get into sales. This is gonna be some sauce right here. It's gonna be very powerful. So I'm gonna go through a full sales script for you guys right now. I'm gonna teach you guys how to close a creator. Sales is not that deep. Even if you're a complete beginner, you can go through a sales call and close. I'm gonna give you the framework that I use in my sales calls and that you can use as well. Before your call, you wanna show up five minutes early and just give yourself five minutes to prepare, get in the right mindset. If you have some notes from when you talked in the DMs, have that in front of you and you wanna remove all distractions from your work environment. So turn off your phone, close all tabs. And then I would highly recommend having this. Having one of these in front of you is very, very powerful. Having a pen and paper in front of you is honestly one of the best tips I can give you for sales. It just helps. Like, I don't know what it is, but the frame of just having a pen and paper and writing your notes down on the call on a pen and paper where they can see you, like you either have the camera down or, or you can just show the pen. And as they give you answers, you just like write shit down. It's super, super powerful. I do this in all my calls and it honestly has helped me improve in sales. It's such a like simple tip, but it is really, really, really good tip. We'll go through sales calls and I'll write down notes for, for every call. And like every sales call that I've ever taken, I can go through, like these are people people that are in my community now because I've closed them and I can go back and understand who the person is, what they're doing, what their goals were. I can figure out like what I sold them basically just for my notes. So I would highly recommend using physical pen and paper, not digital. And then you want to get rid of the attachment to the yes. I know a lot of people are depending on growth operating for making them money, but it kind of gives you that like sales breath where you're kind of needy. You need this deal. You don't need it. And you're not actually looking for a yes. If that's the case, you might end up in a bad partnership. You want to make sure that you're working with a good creator, that you're not just only looking for a yes, that you're looking to help one, the prospect make it empowered, and that you're also trying to see if they're a good fit. Because like I said, this is a long-term partnership that you're going to be getting into. And make sure that they're probably a person that's going to be putting in good work as well. You want a creator that will also be able to help as well. You should not close them if they're not a good fit. You'll waste more time and money by working with the bad creator and close the next creator that you get. Before each call, make sure that you reset confidence and calmness in yourself. And so there's this little pre-call ritual that I've done. I meditate a lot. It gets me in the mindset to work and just focus. And so you can close your eyes and take five deep breaths and then read affirmation out loud. I'm the perfect person to sell the service. I'm here to see if the creator is a good fit and help them make an empowered buying decision. I'm confident calling and talking to business owners of all success levels. They're no different to anybody else. And I realize that I feel confident, excited, and exhilarated talking to big business owners. And I will assume the prospect wants to buy and it's just my job to help them. You want to go into the call with that frame. Here's a script that you can use on these calls. With these sales calls, this is the only time you're ever really going to really have to take a call. As a growth operator, you don't have to take calls to sell people into the community. This is the only time you're ever going to have to hop on a call. I've had people ask me, can I do this without a call? Yes, you can. 
10, but I would really highly recommend against it. Hey name, how's your day been? Hey creator, how's your name been? Hey James, how's your day been? Where are you calling from today? He'd be like, yeah, I'm calling from Miami. I'm jealous, I'm in Chicago. It's cold as hell, that's why I'm wearing this. I low-key wish that I was in Miami. You really don't have to spend too long in the intro. Just be a human and then just jump right in it. So cool James, hope you don't mind if we just dive right in and get started with this call. You wanna control the frame and set the agenda. So you wanna instantly grab control. You're the one controlling the call. You're the expert, you're the growth operator. The way that I would do that is be like, all right James, so the way that these calls typically go is I should ask you a couple questions so I can get a better understanding of where you're at now and where you want to be. And then if I think that I can help, I'll explain how and at the end you can make a yes or no decision whether you want my help or not. Does that sound good? So James, tell me what motivated you to take the time out of your day and schedule a call with me. They'll give you whatever reason it was, probably because they've been thinking about monetizing their audience and you told them that you could do that. So they're interested in learning more. If you don't get a, a good answer off the bat, like if they're just like, oh, well, I mean, you DM me, so I'm here. Tell me more about that. Like, what do you mean by that? Like, you just want to dig and, and get them to tell you that they're, they're looking for help with their audience or whatever it might be. And then you can go into the next part where you start doing some more discovery and qualification. How long have you been making content for? Who would you say your audience is made up of? How engaged would you say your audience is with you? And then what is your current process from turning your viewers into dollars in your pocket or turning followers into dollars? This script, you don't have to follow strictly. There's more questions you can ask if you feel like they make more sense and there's stuff you want to know. This is like a framework. I wouldn't really follow the script by heart. A script is like a crutch. If you can sell without a script, you're a good salesman. And so I would just use this as a framework to follow. Don't be afraid if this gets derailed and goes in a different direction, but just try to keep it along this framework. Then you want to get into some of the pain. Give a process in place to make money from your audience at will. Process in place to turn your followers into dollars like at will. I would definitely recommend asking that one. That is one of the questions that is very powerful. And then you can ask them, so are you comfortable on relying on that way to make money and monetize your audience. And they're gonna say no. And if they say yes, they're probably not a good fit to work with you because they're already making money and you can't help them make the transformation. But if they say um, no, you're golden. And then you can ask them, okay, so how much money are you making from your audience every month right now? And this is also a question that is very necessary to ask. You need to get a specific dollar per month figure before you move forward. Like you need to figure out how much they're making. It could be zero, it doesn't matter. It could be five, 10K, it doesn't matter. As long as you get a specific dollar amount before you move forward, you'll be straight. I can't emphasize this enough. You have to get this before we move forward. Like double down and ask them. So like, this is just for some context. Like it doesn't have to be specific. Give me a ballpark. You just get a, get, you need to get some type of number where they're at. And then from there, got it, James. So you're currently making 1K per month. Now, where do you want to grow to in, in the next 12 months? So you want to figure out their goals. So you're figuring out their current situation and then you're going to figure out their desired situation. Remember a few minutes ago, I showed you that a graphic of like the current creator and the desired creator and then your offer goes in the middle. That's what you're going to do here. So you're going to figure out their current, you're going to figure out their goal and then your offer is going to come right in the middle and you're going to pitch them at the end. So where do you want to grow to in the next 12 months? You also need to get a specific number for this as well before you move forward. Once they give you 10K per month or whatever it may be, honestly, in most cases, it'll probably be 10K per month. That's like everyone's goal. Okay, James, and what's your motivation for getting to 10K per month? And then they're going to spill into their desires and the reasoning for it. So they're going to give you, oh, I'm, I'm in school. I want to get out of school. It's probably the same reason that you're interested in making 10K per month as a growth operator as well. Like you guys are in the same position. You're going to start making money so that you can do nice things in life, buy nice things, have more freedom. They're going to give you those reasons. It might be school, it might be their job, it might be more freedom, whatever it may be, right? And you ask them, how would things be different for you if you got to 10K per month? And you could probably relate to them a lot as well um, with this as well, because you, you share similar desires, right? Really, you just want to relate to them, support them in their vision and make sure that you spend some time painting a clear picture in their mind of like what their life would look like if they get to 10K per month. If they're aiming too low, like, oh yeah, I'm only trying to make three to 5K per month, help them aim higher and expand what's possible for them. But you can use case studies, testimonials, a story that you have seen to help them see a bigger vision. And a good way to do this is to come to my YouTube that you're on right now. I'm actually gonna make a playlist for client success stories, but we have like Ira, 14.5K in two weeks. Sharif, 11K with 80K followers. 80K a month with 80K followers in a few months. Carson Rashad, these are growth operators, 11K a month. These two are creators right here. And you just tell these stories of paid communities. James is 17, running his own paid community, 20K per month in five months. There are a lot of success stories out there that you can use just to show them that if this guy could do it, why can't you, right? And you can even mention me and Brady making over 100K per month profit from our paid community to help as well. After that, you want to sell the creator on why they can't do it on their own. And so you're going to be like, okay, James, so you're currently making $1,000 per month and you want to get to 10K per month. So what's stopping you from achieving that on your own? That's powerful. That's a powerful statement right there. And it'll help you close them because they're going to give up. A lot of people ask me, oh, what's stopping the creators from doing this on their own? Well, ask them and they'll tell you why they can't do it on their own. If they, if they don't give you one of these three following things, then you probably can't work with them and it's cool. There's uh, 200 million creators out there onto the next. But you want to hear one of these three statements before moving forward. They're going to tell you they can't do it on their own or they want to follow a proven system and have guidance by somebody who's 
actually done it. You want to hear one of those three, then you can move forward. If they don't give you one of those, dig deeper. So you think you could do this on your own. Why are you on this call with me? Ideally, they'll, be, they'll give you a reason why they're on the call with you. And then if they give you a reason that's bullshit and you, you could feel that they probably don't want to work with you, end the call and dip. Don't waste your time. Move on to the next. There are tons of creators out there that need growth operators. I have them hit me up all the time because um, I see my content and they know that growth operating is something that they need. There are creators out there waiting for you to hit them up and help them. Don't waste your time on someone that's not interested. You want to hear one of those three things before moving forward. Once you hear it, you're golden. Okay, James, so you're currently making 1K per month. So why not just stay where you are? And he's going to sell you even harder on why he needs this and why he can't just stay where he's at. He's going to be like, oh, I need to get out of my job. I need to get out of school. Like, I realize this is this is shitty. Like, I need to change. And you're currently making $1,000 per month and you want to get to 10K per month, but you've been struggling with figuring out what to sell, how to monetize your audience. And the biggest thing holding you back from being at 10K per month is really just having proper system and business in place to consistently monetize your audience. Does that sound about right? Basically, just summarize what they told you. Remember I said to take pen, paper, and no like take a pen and paper and have some notes? You literally, like, this is notes that I took from one of my sales calls right here. What I would do at this part is literally sit here, but I'm literally going to summarize one of my sales calls and pitch how I would pitch. This is literally a sales call that I took and I closed. You dropped out of college. You've been trying to make some money doing this. You're currently making 2K per month. You're trying to get to 10K per month. And you realize that dropshipping isn't a realistic business model. It's not real. You want to make 10K per month so you can own your own apartment, not depend on your parents. You want your own brand and you want to make content. And you think the biggest thing holding you back from getting to 10K per month is just the proper business model, right? And then he'd be like, yeah, this is literally a sales call that I took, selling someone into my paid community for growth operating. And that's the same way that I pitched them. I literally just took the notes that I wrote down about who he is, where he's at, what his goal is, like his pain, his struggles, and I just say it back to them. And in that moment, they're gonna feel that you understand them and they're gonna be like, wow, this guy really gets it. The second I made the switch, I had people at the end of my calls be like, damn, this guy really understands me. Like, how do you, like, you really understand me? When someone feels like that, they'll wanna pay you, they'll wanna work with you. The, cr the creator will really feel like you understand them and you know who they are and you relate to them. And it's really just you just saying back to them what they told you. It's very simple. They're going to say, yeah, that sounds about right once you summarize it to them. And they're going to be like, okay, so when are you wanting to fix this? Ideally, you get them to say as soon as possible, I want to fix this now. They say, oh yeah, let's get started in January. Oh yeah, let's get started in a few months. So this is not a priority for you? Ask them. And if they're not ready to move forward, you, you're you not going to work with them. They're not an ideal fit for you. You want to go find a creator that's ready to move forward ASAP. If you've gone through the process right and they are a good fit, they'll tell you as soon as possible. And then you're going to be like, okay, James, so based on what you told me, I could definitely help with that. Would you like me to tell you about what I do? And then here you're going to pitch them what you do as a growth operator. So my area of expertise is helping content creators who are struggling to monetize their audience effectively to make 10K a month or more consistently by building paid school communities. So I typically work with fitness creators and I help them get to 10K per month from a paid community. And here it's like kind of custom. Like you don't want to script this out fully. You just want to use this framework. State what you're an expert at. You want to make sure you craft it to fit their situation exactly. When you explain what you do, you want them to think, wow, that's me. And then you want to just like practice this over and over. Maybe even look in the mirror, record a video of you saying this until you can deliver this smoothly and powerfully with confidence. Pitching. And so you want to break your pitch up into three parts and you want to make sure it's like less than two minutes. This has to be brief and explained from a high level. You're going to activate the feature brain in your prospect and they're going to start trying to break down the cost of your thing, of your service by each feature. Instead, you want to make it focus on the outcome. You're not selling a paid community. You're selling a transformation here and you want it to be focused on that transformation that they're going to go through, that outcome that they're going to get from the transformation. And during the pitch, you're not going to mention price. So James, how I can help you with this is a three month growth operating partnership where we'll work together closely for three months to one, Ask your audience what they want so we can create an offer that's hard for them to say no to. Two, set up a sales system so you can turn your audience into paying customers at will. And three, I'll do everything in the business for you on the back end so we can make more money together and you can focus on creating the content you love. And after your pitch, you want to just zip it and shut up. And they're going to sit there, they're going to think about what you said, and they're going to ask you specific questions. If they ask for the price here, just deflect it. Be like, yeah, I'm going to get to that in a second. But what questions do you have for me specifically about the process? You just want to ask them what do they have about the process because they're going to ask you. And when you do this, they're going to paint a picture in your head of the perfect service. So any holes they have in their, their mind about what you're doing that they don't understand, they're going to ask you and then they're going to fill it out perfectly so that after they ask all their questions, they're going to understand exactly what you do in the frame of like what they're looking for out of this. They're going to ask you things that are important to them and you answer them. When you answer, you want to just make sure you answer their questions specifically and not to yap. Don't ramble. Don't go on. You literally just answer the question. Keep it keep it brief. Keep it simple. And then ask them what other questions do you have for me about the process? And you just keep doing this over and over and over until they're like, oh, no, I think I'm good. This makes perfect sense. And they have a clear understanding. You can ask them how confident they are. Get a temperature check of where they're at on if this is something they want to do. So James, I mean, with that process outline in front of you, how confident would you say you are that this is exactly what you need to get to 10K a month in three months? And if they show any sign at all that they aren't fully confident in the process, ask them what other questions they have about the process because there's probably something there that they're just not having asked that is holding them back from being fully confident. Um, and then you want to make sure that they're fully confident before you move on. Be like, I'm fully confident. And then you'd be like, cool. So you're confident in the process. How confident would you say you are? And me as a person, I'll get you there on like a scale of one to 10. And you need to get nine or 10 before you move on. Don't want to take... 
uh, anything less. If they give you like a one through an eight, ask them so like what's really holding you back from being at like a nine or a 10. And then they're gonna give you whatever their objection is, whatever their concern is. And you can handle that, answer the question, give them a case study, show them testimonials or whatever you may need to do to raise their confidence. And then ask them again where they're at one to 10. And if you don't have any case studies or testimonials, well, I guess most of you guys can't do this. Typically what we get our students to do in our paid community is just show them our winch channel and tell them that we're helping you every step of the way. Typically people in our community are getting mentored from us and hopping on calls with us consistently for help with this. And so we tell them they could just go through the winch channel and scroll through and just be like, yeah, I'm getting mentored from this community. You literally just pop up this up and just scroll through the winch channel and show them all the success within the community and then show them like all the people making a ton of money with paid communities and raise their confidence using our social proof. Most of you watching this free course on YouTube are not within our paid community. So you probably can't do that. You can probably find some maybe in the, the free school or you can just show them the testimonials on my YouTube. So you're confident in the process and you're confident in me. So I guess the only thing then would be price, right? So the way that I well, that I say this is, is like, you, you're just gonna be curious and confused. So cool, James. So you're confident in the process and you're confident in me. So I guess the only thing then would be price, right? And they're gonna be like, yeah, yeah, what's the price? And so all the way up to this point, they're like ready. They are ready. They're sold, they're bought in. You did the confidence check. You got their pain out, like they're ready to close. What I would typically recommend doing is price anchoring, throwing out a higher price and then dropping it so that the second price seems more affordable. Now stores do this all the time. People do this all the time where they'll anchor, like they'll do like a cross out on like a, a deal, like a Black Friday deal or something like that. Powerful. So while the everyday growth partnership fee is typically 75 500 set up and then 60% of profit for deals like this. This is there's so much work on my end, but I found that partners who are able to make decisions quickly are always the best partners and we do amazing work together. So for that reason, I offer something called incentive-based pricing, or if you make a decision on the call with me today, I'll waive the 7,500 setup fee and it's just a 50-50 partnership. So basically what you're doing is you're throwing out a massive price to anchor and then you can get rid of the entire setup fee and just be like, I just want 50-50. They're gonna bite that. Like they're gonna jump on that. And it doesn't have to be 7,500, it could be 3K, it could be 5K, whatever it may be. Or you can jump from like 7,500 to 3K. I'll trap the 7,500 setup fee and it'll just be 3K and a 50-50 partnership. Something like that. You just want to price anchor. You can do 5K here when you're price anchoring and then you can drop it to 3K. Whatever you feel comfortable with, price anchoring is really good. And then having that incentive-based pricing is very powerful as well. And it'll help you ensure to close that deal on the spot. You don't want to give them like, oh, I need to think about it. You're telling them if you're able to not think about it and just make a decision, I'll get rid of the fee. Very, very powerful incentive-based pricing. I'd recommend doing it. It'll help you close. When I implemented that into my sales, it completely changed. Close rate. Like I started closing like crazy. And then after you say the price, you want to shut up. This is the most important part of the entire call. You cannot cave in and you must remain silent until the prospect speaks. Um, and sometimes this can get up to like a minute or two, but you just want to be quiet. Don't say anything. Really, whoever speaks first kind of loses. So the prospect is going to sit there. They're going to think. They're going to be like, okay, um, blah, blah. think about whatever they, they might have. And they'll be like, okay, so what's next? Or how do we get started? Or okay, let's do it. Or they might hit you with a question and then you can answer it. And then you can be on. You can then push them forward. But typically, whoever speaks first loses. And and if you speak first, you'll probably sell yourself out of the deal. There's a way for them to hit you with like, okay, how do we get started? Or they'll be like, oh, I can't afford that. And then you can drop the fee if you are trying to drop them a fee. And then when they're ready to move forward, you'll be like, okay, cool. So if you're ready to move forward, what I can do is send over the agreement that essentially states everything we're gonna do for you over the next few months. As I just stated, and you can read through it, make sure it looks good and let me know if you have any questions or concerns. If it looks good, you can sign it and it'll prompt you to pay. Once the payment is taken care of, we'll get you onboarded ASAP. Makes sense. The platform that we typically use for contracts is called PandaDoc. I'm not sure if this is completely free. It might be paid, but honestly, in my opinion, a contract is not super necessary. Now, it is very nice to have. It'll ensure that you don't get screwed over out of a deal like this. There should be some type of free contract tools out there and you can just get ChatGPT to write up a legal agreement for this. And then, yeah, you can take payment through Stripe or Zelle or PayPal, whatever payment methods you have, take payment and then boom, it'll be good. That is a sales call for growth operating. Just went through the entire script for that. Now, let's go through how to actually onboard your creator once you've closed them. So after you close them, what you wanna do is schedule, you can make another calendar link on your Calendly for onboarding and you wanna just schedule a call after your call to hop on the call and make sure you're on the same page. And so what to cover on an onboarding call is for one, this is like the, the framework you can go through. First, just ask them if they can hear you. Then you're gonna sit there and talk for a few minutes, just yeah. Build some report, build a relationship. And then you wanna tell them how these calls typically go. So just tell them what you're gonna cover. You're gonna figure out where they're at, what they're struggling with. You're gonna go over how you're gonna help them and then ask them what questions they have about the process and the next steps. You're gonna explain the next steps. And so basically what you can do is you can use this, which I'm gonna get more into in depth in a second once I get down here. But this is basically the, the 12 steps you need to follow to make money within 14 days of the paid community. And so at this point, you're here, you're in this step. And so you 
just want to explain all these following steps with your creators. So first, we're going to do market research, figure out who's in the audience, what they're struggling with, what they need help, so we can figure out an offer to make. And then we're going to put together a master messaging sheet. Then we're going to position our offer. Then we're going to write the sales letter. Then we're going to record the sales letter. Then we're going to optimize your IG. Then we're going to help you with traffic and your content system. And then we're going to set up the school. And then we're going to start selling it and closing people in the DMs to make money. And you can explain that system that you're going to walk them through, which you'll know by the time you finish watching this course. And then you can ask them what questions they have about it. And then go ahead and get started with it. On this call, I would also recommend one school does require it's like $99 per month. And I'll link in the description a link to a free 14 day trial. Ideally, you can get the creator to pay for that. And so on that call would be a good time to ask for them to pay for that. Or you can figure out who's going to pay for that. Like that could be included in your setup fee, whatever it may be. Or you could talk about how we can make money in 14 days doing this. So we can run a trial and then 14 days once you've made some money from this, we can go ahead and pay for it. However you guys want to go about that, but that's something to cover there. And you can go ahead and try to get logins to their Instagram for their socials. So you can do things without having their permission and their help, whatever it may be. And then you can get some pictures for the school, ask them to send over some pictures for the branding, if they already have branding or whatever it may be. So whatever things that you feel like you might need moving forward, that you can go ahead and just get out of the way on this call so you don't have to do that through text. Once you've closed the creator, before you can sell, you want to do market research. Before you can even build the school, you need to do market research. You need to figure out who is in the creator's audience, what they're struggling with, what they want, what they need help with, they like why they even want to work with the creator, why the creator's content resonated with them, how much the money they have, how much they'd be willing to pay. You just want to figure out who is in the creator's audience. This is the most important part of the entire process when building a paid community. Most people skip this. And I'll tell you, I personally, I've done a ton of market research. Like I've got probably like 8,000 data points from people within my audience to figure out who they are, what they're struggling with, what they need help with. And I've used those data points to tweak my offer like 20 times. And I tweaked my offer very slightly many times. And on the 20th time, we had a, like a no brainer offer, product market fit. We found product market fit. The second we found product market fit after doing all those tweaks, our business 4 x Like we were already making good money. You can make good money without product market fit. You can make 10, 20, 30K a month without it. But the second we found product market fit, we went from like 50K per month to 186 the next month. And so market research, that was for market research. That was from talking to people and tweaking our offer, like slightly every month or so. We would just talk to people, see what's resonating with them and see what they want, tweaking your offer. And so before you even make your offer, before you even make the community, you want to do market research so that you can figure out who is in their audience and you can figure out like what you should even offer them. To do this, what you want to do is hop on 10, 20, 30 calls with people in the creator's audience. And what you can do is use AI to record. And so there is this AI, there's a a few out there. Fireflies that AI is something that I used to use. It's a note taker. What I would do is literally just connect it to your Zoom account and it'll automatically join all your meetings and then it'll give you a summary. And so let me see if I can find a summary to show to you. So here we go. This is like a recorded call, community coaching calls, and it literally summarized the entire meeting. Now I think I have to log in to get access to this, but it summarizes it for you with AI and it goes through and it shows you everything that you've talked about. It shows you who spoke and then has a full transcript, but it'll summarize it for you. And that's what you're looking to use this for. Or what I currently use the most, I think is read AI which is a really cool tool and it also does the same thing and so i literally will like so this is a group call with our community from yesterday we had 72 people pop on it looks like and it has the entire thing recorded transcribed summarized and so you'll be able to use this and use ai to actually analyze who is in the audience so i'm gonna show you how to do that but yeah so summary with market research you want to one create a calendly link specifically for market research but then you're going to create a graphic for the creator story you can go on canva or just get a picture from them and then say that you're looking to give away something huge for free for the people who book a call and just put the link on the story. So you want to give them an offer, a reason to book a call for market research. And yeah, you want to make sure to reduce the spots in your calendar so that you don't get an insane amount of calls, especially if you work with a creator with like a million followers. Another method is to log in, do the same thing, and that you're giving away something huge for free. Don't say what it is and then add a DM CTA. So DM me free for it, give them a keyword and then respond to the DMs like, this is huge. I'm working on something massive. So you need to hop on a 15 minute call with the member of my team to discuss. And the member of the team is you, the growth operator. And then end the DM with a question like, are you free this Friday or whatever day you want to hop on calls? They say yes, give them two time options. Like does 5.30 or six work better for you? Similar to how when you book the call with the creator, you give them two options. You don't make them choose yes or no. You give them like a, does this time work or does this time work? And you can add a time zone as well, I'd recommend that. And then book a call with yourself for the time that they said worked best so that you're still organized and then call them off the creator's IG or call them from phone or hop on Zoom. And then on these calls, here's a script you're gonna follow. So introduce yourself so that, like I said, they're, they're familiar with the creator, but they're not really familiar with yourself yet. What's going on, bro? My name's Eddie. I'm here in Chicago and I'm uh, Eddie's right-hand man. How's your day been going, bro? And then you're gonna establish the purpose of the call. So explain that you're trying to understand them so that you can make the thing that you're building with the creator better and that you'll give them free access at the end of the call, but don't mention what it is for. And then you'll ask them some personal questions. What are your goals? Three biggest issues in life. What is your greatest concern? What are the three things you think that the creator can help you with? Ask them questions about the community. So talk about how you're 
building a community um, and ask them if they'd like it. Ask them what you can add to make it super valuable and then ask them how much they would pay for something like this and then what can we do to make you want to pay more? And hypothetically, would you join this right now? And these are all super basic. You wanna add more depending on your niche and ask unique questions to each individual. Answer so you don't sound too salesy. And just dig as much information about their problems and desires. You wanna you wanna just dig and figure out who they are. And if they give you an answer that's interesting you, and you wanna dig on top of it, ask them a question specifically about what their answer was. And then you could take notes on like Notion or physical notes, or you can also use the AI to record it and summarize it for you. But so important things to consider, the more you can get, the easier you'll have creating an offer. Like I said, I had 8,000 data points. We use a little bit of a different process to collect all those data points, but the more information you can have, the better. And give away early access as your free thing. This way you can get even more feedback on your offer after you launch it, and you can have a stronger community early on. So just let them know that it's gonna be dropping soon and that they'll get early access since they have to on a call with you. But you wanna keep it secret and don't tell anyone anything about it until after they get on the phone with you. Even then, you don't tell them until you're done with the personal questions. They need to be intrigued and curious. So you don't wanna explain what it is on the front end, on the story, or in the DMs. You wanna explain it at the end of the call. And then try not to spend too long in this phase, but also don't be too eager to get on calls. If you ask people, are you free today at 6 p.m. EST, they'll probably ghost you. I'm gonna give them a, a little bit of time in advance. And then this was actually made by someone in my paid community, Christian. Shout out to you, Christian. His name is Christian Sal. You can probably find him in Creator Click or Creator Accelerator if you have any questions about this for him. To create your offer. So once you've done that, what you wanna do is you're gonna use the AI that I showed you to go ahead and summarize everything. You're gonna use ChatGPT to help you summarize what you just went through. This is a cheat sheet that we've used to go ahead and use AI to do this. And so this is focused on figuring out who's the ideal avatar, like the target audience, who you're selling to. And at the end, everything will make sense and tie together. The general rule of thumb here is just a dump. This is a brain dump. And you're gonna put as much data as possible from your market research. And then you're gonna look back at your notes and all of that, the recording, and you're gonna use this to summarize everything. First, we need to figure out what our current avatar situation looks like. So here you're gonna list out all the problems they face. And then after that, you're gonna figure out three to five common problems, like longer responses, and write longer sentences explaining what their problems are. Think about the real fears and what their pain is. You just wanna summarize and explain what their problems are. And then you're gonna list out their desires, make a fat list of all their desires, what they want, their goals. And then you're gonna write out like a paragraph explaining what their deep rooted desire is. So like, for example, off the top of my head, my target audience, I can already know that most people are looking to get freedom, really. So they're looking to get out of their job or school and escape the matrix. And they're looking to make 10K a month so that they can have the freedom to travel, have time freedom, location freedom, and financial freedom, take care of the people around them and who they love. Their dream life is similar to what I'm living right now in 19, which still blows my mind that I'm able to do this, make over 100K profit per month, live in a high rise in Chicago, have the freedom to travel and do all this stuff. And so a lot of people in my audience are looking for a similar lifestyle to that. And so that's like the deep rooted desire. Like off the top of my head, everything I just said is like the deep rooted desire of people in my audience typically. And so whatever you get out of your creator's audience, you wanna write it out kind of similar how I just spoke it. And then here, you're gonna figure out what your unique selling proposition is with the creator. So you need to figure out what makes the creator and their offer different in the market. And so that's probably the most important part of the entire process. You wanna just dump and write a long unorganized brain dump, selling yourself or whoever you think is reading this on why the creator is extremely unique to sell this product. What makes them really unique? What would make them know the creator deeply? So maybe they resonate with the creator's content. What would make them trust the creator deeply? And why should they believe the creator can help them go from the current situation to their desired situation the way that we want to get there. And then you wanna go deeper than just that. And you wanna like explain what your unique offer is compared to the creator's competitors. People sell things, right? You're never gonna get into a market where no one's selling anything. The competition is good, but you just wanna find a way to separate yourself from your competition, right? Like what about the creator is unique compared to everyone else? And then you wanna list out three most important parts in the current situation. So three major pain points and then summarize it into one sentence. And then you wanna list out 15 to 30 steps on how you plan on taking them from the current situation to the desired situation. So for example, ours is similar to this. So we're gonna teach you how to explain what it is, how to pick a niche, how to find creators, how to do outreach. Like all the steps you have to go through to have success growth operating is similar to what you're gonna list out. So like how to lose weight. First, you have to understand how it works. Then you have to understand how nutrition works. And you have to figure out how dieting works, all of that. All the steps you have to go through, where do they start, where do they do inside, and where do they finish? Their current situation, maybe they're fat, maybe they weigh 600 pounds. Their desired situation is to weigh 250. So you're gonna go through how they're gonna go through nutrition, exercise, all that stuff. And then the bridge, the steps you're gonna take them through is the product. That's what you're gonna build out in the community and the course you're gonna be building. And so you're gonna talk about the steps. This will help you figure out how to build out the course and what the creator needs to include in there. And then you can figure out how long this transformation will take. So maybe a weight loss transformation in three months, maybe it's six months, maybe it's six weeks, whatever it may be. You wanna figure out how long that'll take realistically. And then you wanna figure out their desired situation, list this out in one sentence expl explanation, and then you wanna go through the transformation. So you wanna write out their current situation, then you wanna write out the bridge, which is your offer, and then you wanna write out their desired situation. So this is a good graphic. So let's say you're working with a fitness creator, their current audience is fat, they weigh 600 pounds, they wanna be happy and skinny and weigh 200 pounds. Your offer, the bridge, the steps you're gonna take them through in the community is gonna help them go from there. That's your offer. That's how you figure out what to
to include in the community. Just figure out what steps I need to go through to make that transformation. Now that we know what the transformation looks like, we need a reason to believe in it. This is where we're arguing why the creator is capable of delivering the transformation. So you can go to the creator's life journey. So write out the creator's journey in a series of chronological steps that they took to accomplish the transformation themselves. So go all the way back to childhood and come up to the present day. The story is very powerful. Like your, your personal story is very, very powerful. And then you can go to the case study success. So if they've already helped people, maybe they've already done this before. List out the success that they've had for people. List out as many transformations as possible. And if they don't have this, it's fine. Once you have everything figured out, you want to list out all the key features. Explain how they're beneficial to the transformation and what value it actually holds. This will increase the perceived likelihood of success. Make your community extremely valuable. Once you've done all of that, we have absolutely everything and we want to create an avatar that we're serving. Every creator has a niche of one. And this will help us find out what that is. We're going to take this and go into ChatGPT. So let's pull that up. We're on ChatGPT and what we could do is take this prompt and go ahead, paste this. So this is the name of your avatar. So let's say that we're going to make a James avatar. I'm ready. I'll give you data from, let's say you took 20 calls. And once you receive the data, just say, awesome, got the data, sound good. And then ChatGPT is going to respond. Sounds like a great plan. Please go ahead and share data. Once I receive it, I'll start working on crafting your messaging. Cool, here's what my audience's current situation looks like. And so you want to copy and paste this and put in what you got up here. And then anything else you got from the AI recordings, paste that in here, ChatGPT will get it. And then if it starts working on the data and trying to give you answers, be like, remember just to say awesome about the data. You're going to do that for everything. So desires, their unique selling proposition, your bridge, your transformation, proof, key features, and then now ChatGPT is going to be fueled up with all the data and it's going to understand your offer. And then you want to copy and paste this and you'd be like, now I want to create a marketing avatar using the audience's data above. Avatar's name is Steve. Using all the data above, describe who Steve is by answering the questions provided. Expand on your description that need to be expanded on. And then you give it questions to answer in its response. So describe your avatar's background and current lifestyle. What is your financial situation? Some key experiences or events, family, blah, 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 blah. blah. So you go ahead, you guys can pause this and read through this and then paste this into ChatGPT. And then and the response, ChatGPT will give you this. You, you put it here and then you can also ask it more questions like what keeps him night, awake at night and then answer that in here. This is an example for me actually doing this from my data, from my own audience. This is from like 8,000 data points. And so Steve, who is my ideal avatar for my paid community at 20 years old is a determined and ambitious individual with a burning desire to break free from the constraints of a traditional life. He's a college student juggling classes and part-time work. His heart isn't in either. He dreams of entrepreneurial success, believing there's a different path for him out there. Financially, Steve is scraping by relying on student loans and a part-time job that covers expenses. He's dissatisfied with his limited income, worried about his future. His main priorities include finding a purposeful career, gaining financial stability, and having the freedom. Remember how I knew this off the top of my head is because I've done this a few times and I understand who my market is. He goes into his background, single, a few responsibilities. He's looking for direction, mentorship, and a sense of purpose. Family supports him, but worries his financial stability and future. Crave success with the proof for his loved ones that his unconventional path can lead to success. And then it goes through like more of that. But that's basically what I got from doing this. And it'll help you figure that out. It's very powerful to do this. And then from there, you can also figure out how much fulfillment you want to do within your offer. And so you can use this right here to figure that out. And so this, this will tell you if you want to have more like a really fully built out course, similar to like ours, you're able to charge more money for that. The less you have in the classroom, the less money you can charge for that. Let's say you're a really, really strong community, but less classroom stuff. You could charge a lot for that. Like when I first got started growth operating, we didn't have a course. It was literally just a community for $75 a month. We had 2000 people pay for it. And then you can have events in there. So like challenges, like we host challenges. We give away stuff in the community for participation and stuff like that, for being active. And so the more you have, the more you can charge for that. Like we're flying people out to Chicago 2024 for an in-person mastermind event within our community. We're able to charge for that. And then the more support you have, more calls, more direct access you have, the more you can charge for that. And so you could figure out on the spectrum where you want to be, where you want to price yourself and all of that. And then they'll also tell you how much to price it based off of like the calls, right? Now that you have an offer, you kind of have figured out like your bridge and what you're going to go through, the transformation they're going to go through. You can build out the school. So we're going to go ahead and build out a demo school. Let's go ahead and create a new community. We'll name this demo school group for actually, yeah. There we go. And like I said, there's a free trial with school. You get a 14 day free trial and I'll link that in the description as well. But yeah, you can go ahead and start your trial whenever you're ready to start building it out. There we go. Cool. So demo group. So when building up the school, it's very simple. Basically what you'd want to do, like name it, and then you would upload branding. So let's see if I have any branding. There we go. Upload a logo. You can reposition it. Upload an icon as well. And then you'll add a description. The new path to having success, growth, operating. Something simple. Change the color. 
choose if you want it public or private. I'd put this private, especially if this is your paid one. And then you can go to the dashboard. You'll be able to get payments through here. Payouts will show up here. And then did that. Subscriptions, you can add a price. So if you're taking payments through school, which I would recommend, you connect your bank account and school's gonna use Stripe to do that. Um, and so you go ahead and connect that. You can use the creator's account or you can use your account. That's something you just determine on the onboarding call. You log in, connect it, and then you'll have that. Let's say you connect your bank account, right? You choose the price and you can change this to whatever you want it to be. Um, so let's say you charge $100 per month for access and then you can add categories. So let's say you're doing like weight loss offer. Let's go ahead and add a diet one. All things diet and nutrition. Add that, add a category, progress picks. And add one, exercises. You can add one like form feedback so people can like submit videos of them doing exercises and get feedback just add discussion tabs on like what would make sense you gamify by adding different prizes for them to get at a certain level so level one rookie lifter and then make names you know um, i can show you guys how ours is set up in a second and then you can add links if you want to add resources or push them anywhere and then yeah the setup for school is honestly simple get the community get the discussion tabs and then in the classroom you can go ahead and add a course name it let's go ahead and add nutrition how to get your diet right, right? Add a photo and then you can go ahead and publish it. And then in here you can add modules. And so with the modules, you can go ahead, add videos. You can link like YouTube videos, Wistia videos, Loom videos, however you wanna host the course videos. And add a description explaining what it is. You can add a ton of these. And so that's how you can build out your course. And then you can go ahead and add group calls. So click on this plus up here, weekly group huddle. You can host it on Zoom, add the Zoom link, choose the time, make it reoccurring. Let's say you wanna do this every Wednesday, date, choose the time, let's say 10 p.m., an hour, and then you can add a description and add an image, and then you can make it so that everyone could join or a certain level or people in a certain course. Whatever it may be, you add that and then boom, now you have your weekly group call set up and people are able to click on this and see that. And the link will be here once you add it. Your school's pretty much set up. You can add a image on the front end so that people can see what it looks like. And you can add a video as well if you wanna explain how it works on the front end. Create the free group, you can add a description. The best community helping growth operator scale something like that you can add a link to the socials or your vsl which i'm going to show you guys in a second setting up a school group is very simple very very simple and i'll show you guys i'll just peek inside creator accelerator so you can see we got a lot of discussion tabs classroom is fully built out and then we have a ton of group calls but that is what my paid community that makes me over 100k per month looks like it's super active and is very simple to set up it makes me over 100k profit per month that's how you set up a school very very simple people hear me say it only takes like a couple hours to set up a school they don't believe me until like I try to walk through a demo setup like that and it's like there's not much I can show other than that because it is that simple now what will take a bit longer is actually building out a course but most of that's gonna be the creators responsibility because you don't even have the expertise to do that but it shouldn't take that long to build out the school and build out the skeleton you can sell with the skeleton you don't need a fully built out course to start selling you could start selling like creator accelerator started off without what we have now it was not what it is now and we were able to sell and charge a lot for it we were actually charging four figures for it we don't anymore but we were before there was even anything built out and we were able to sell before before you build because it's you're actively building it out and actively helping people get through that transformation through group calls through the community it's not just the course you need right the course is like one part out of a lot which i'm going to show you guys as well in a second what else goes into it so to launch it and actually start selling it once you have the skeleton built out you're gonna use a sales letter you're gonna use a video sales letter let's answer the question what is the function of a sales letter basically these are the same as a sales call and on the sales call you're creating a gap between the current and their desired situation and so where the gap is all of their built-up pain you're going to bring out their pain in this video and and then you're gonna solve that pain with your offer. Sales letters are doing the same thing, but instead of having a back and forth conversation, you're talking at them. And humans will buy something if you just clearly satisfy their pain and appeal to their desires. And so if you did market research like you're supposed to, you spent time putting together master messaging, you won't have an issue putting together a good sales letter. You could be a terrible copywriter and still have an amazing sales letter if you did good research. Like that's really all it takes. Like just being able to understand, like I'm able to just ever loosely like speak off who my audience is. Like I could be on the street and I could see someone and be like, oh yeah, you're probably like someone who would be interested in my community. Just cause I can tell like you probably have the same aspect Inspirations and desires like I just understand who they are and if you understand who they are and you can speak to them like they'll 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 buy so the three key objectives to a sales letter is very simple first of all you just got to educate them to buy if you can check these three boxes they'll buy so they need to know the creator so the journey story so the background their origin story and then they need to trust the creator so social proof so why are they qualified to talk about this and sell you something and then they need to believe that the creator has the perfect solution for their gap their pain um, the offer needs to satisfy their pain their current situation and, des and desires their desired situation and so if you're able to educate them to buy they'll buy you just need to educate them and then you need to clearly satisfy their pain, appeal to their desires, and bridge the gap in their mind. If you check these three boxes, you have successfully created a sales letter. And so does the sales letter clearly state their current
current situation and satisfy their pain? Does the sales letter clearly appeal to their desires? Does the sales letter perfectly bridge the gap between their current and desired situation? And then if you can get them to this call to action at the end, you're golden. At the end of every sales letter, there's a call to action. The call to action is what gets them to the next step, which is a purchasing decision. To get them to the next step, they need to see the pitch and then the CTA. So the goal is to hold them until the end of the video. What even is a sales letter? It's very simple. YouTube videos are sales letter. Every single YouTube video you're watching is a sales letter. This one is as well. Webinars are sales letters. Pin TikToks are mini sales letters. Thank you videos are sales letters. Commercials back in the day are sales letters. You might not believe me when I say YouTube videos are sales letters, but nowadays every single YouTube video is a sales letter. This one's a sales letter. This one's a sales letter. This one's a sales letter. And that video is trying to get you to take some type of action. Any video that's trying to get you to take some type of action is a sales letter. And this is direct response copywriting. We're getting into some high level stuff, but I want this free course to be super valuable. And I want you guys to know that this process is not super easy, but it's simple. Nothing is, is super easy. Anyone that tries to sell you on like a business model that is super easy is just selling you the dream and then trying to sell you their course. But I'm here to show you guys the entire process and show you that once you have this set up, you're gonna have a fucking money printer. I'm break down my sales letter and show you how simple it is. And now that you understand the basics of sales letters, we're gonna break down the sales letter that helped us make 100K a month in November. So here it is, this doc. You guys have probably seen this all over my context. I used to, I, I push this a lot. My sales letter is me breaking down how I made 263K in a single year as a growth operator partnering with the creator. And as we're looking at this now, there's 12 people reading my sales letter right now, 12 people. So this is still bringing in bread, bro. This is still bringing in bread. And so I go through three things in this. I explain the growth operator and pay community business model. And then I hook them in, show them some social proof, show them some proof that what we do is legitimate. And I'll show you guys this as well, because I don't know if I've showed this in this video, but 263K my senior year of high school, 43K September from doing this, 20K a month coming in from our school. So last month we actually took home 50 each because 100 profit total. And I split that between my growth operator and me. December, when I'm recording this, we're actually on pace to take home 100 each. So you guys will hear about that once that happens. But basically I talk about who this is for, who this is not for. And then I go into our backstory. Go through our backstory, journey of getting into this, journey of having our first success and starting to make some money with this. And then keep going through, keep going through. And then I start showing them like my transformation. So I went from broke to now having the desired lifestyle that most people have, the desired outcome, the dream outcome that people are looking to have, which is what my target audience wants. Brady's able to buy his Tesla, blah, blah, blah. And then I understand it from a high level, I understand what growth operating is. And then I sell them on the model. And then I go through the process and then show them like the transformation that people will go through from working with us. So mindset, creating an offer, money math, finding a creator, a lot of the stuff that I'm going through right now, because technically this right now, this free course is a sales letter. This doc, which is a free 81 page guide is a sales letter. And then I summarize the process. And then if you want to become a growth operator, want to make your extra 5k, which is the desires that I got from the market research, you want to learn from me directly. And then I told them to register for my class. But instead, what you guys are going to do is replace this with a DM CTA. So if you want more help, more blah, 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 put together a paid community going through all this stuff and walking you through step by step. If you're interested, go ahead and DM me the word I'm in on Instagram is what I would say. And then you get people to DM you on Instagram. Our funnel right now is a little bit different and it's a lot more high level and complex than what you guys will do to get your first 10, 50, 100K a month. And the way you're gonna do that is through selling through the DMs. And so you'll get them to DM the creator I'm in and then you'll manage the DMs for them. So that is a sales letter. That's how you launch the community. Let's take a look at someone inside of Creator Accelerator, my paid community, has it set up. She has her VSL and the link in her bio. Hey, this is how you can And then she goes life. through a doc where she goes through her story and then she goes through community of the process three reasons and then she goes through her pitch at the end and then her cta at the end of this it goes through her story goes through the transformation it goes through the features and then it is dm me i'm in and then from there she's selling through the dms and then she also has like DM me guide. And from there, she'll just end up sending the VSL. And I'm going to go through more of how to use that in a second. But I just wanted to break that down like an example of how someone's actually using this currently with the strategy that you should be implementing. Instead of running a free class, you should run just the DM CTA. There you go. And then I have a video going through it. You can go through my video as well. For my on? doc, there's that sales letter. You know, to launch a community, you know how to sell the community the right way. And so here's the funnel that you're going to be using for paid community. We've tested tons of funnels. This is the one that I guarantee you works the best. The creator's probably on a lot of social media platforms. And so you're just gonna take all of their traffic sources. They probably have a few, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, maybe even on Twitter. And you're gonna push them all to Instagram. You're gonna, in all their content, you want them to start using Instagram call to action. So at the end of a video or in the description, push them to the Instagram. And so we need to tell all of the leads to go to one place. People on social media, I like to say they are dopamine monkeys. And so you can't really be telling them multiple things. And so you need to get rid of all the links in the creator's bio, except for one, 
which pushes them to the Instagram. At that place, we want the leads to want to buy our stuff. And so through Instagram, we're gonna use a social funnel on Instagram to get the leads to want to buy stuff. And so Instagram will push them to watch our awesome free paid community sales letter. It is a sales letter, but it's kind of disguised as like free value. You're gonna put it in the bio, kind of how like Ira had it in her bio, just the link to it. And then you're also gonna have them DM to get access to it. And then you're gonna send it to them in the DMs. And then from there, they're gonna watch it. And then they're gonna give you interested responses that they wanna buy the stuff. They'll send you an I'm in DM. And then finally, we'll use our elite DM sales skills to make sure they buy their spot ASAP. And so you're gonna close them through the DMs. I'm gonna go through the script in a second on how to close them. And then you're gonna get paid. They're gonna join the community. You're gonna get paid. And then you're gonna give them access to the community. Here's the script. Right now, we're gonna go through leveraging the sales letter. Then we're gonna go through the script and then we're gonna go through some best practices. So before we get into the rest of the script, we need to understand where they're coming from. So our sales letter should have executed the following if done correctly. They should believe they can do it. They believe the creator can help them and they believe that this is the best possible solution. So their current situation is painful and they wanna to move towards their desired situation. They need a bridge to walk across. So we're selling the bridge. If you did your sales letter right, you should do 99% of the heavy lifting. So our sales letter should have already pushed them into the buying pocket. The prospect believes that the transformation is possible, but only with your help. Over here to the left of the buying pocket, they don't believe they can do it at all, right? They're in their current situation. They don't believe they can do it at all. To the right of the buying pocket, they believe they can do it on their own. You want them to be right in the middle. They believe they can do it, but they know they can't do it on their own, right? They need it. They need your help. The sales letter should give you an authority frame and you know what's best for them and they need you. So if they believe you need them, you'll lose the sale. So you need to keep the frame of an authority. Community is extremely exclusive and the creator is the leader of it. We need to use our sales script to push them deeper into the buying pocket so they will buy. DM closing because you're going to be responding from the creator's account. So it looks like you are the creator. Basically, the prospect's having a DM conversation specifically with their favorite creator, right? And so they're going to say I'm in if they watch the sales letter. And then, hey, James, glad you're taking getting in shape seriously. Now, before we move forward, what made you want to get in shape? Say you're running a fitness offer, right? And this works for any offers, right? Uh, they're going to give you a response. You're going to respond to them, acknowledge it, show that you heard what they said. Yeah, I get that, blah, blah, blah. I've been there. So what's the journey been like so far for you? Or what have you tried in the past? How long have you been at it? Here's example questions. They're going to talk some more and then acknowledge what they said. So why do you feel like you're not already there losing 100 pounds or whatever their goal is, right? And you're going to bring up the pain, make it fresh. Be like, okay, I got you. I understand. I've been there. So James, we only have 10 early bird spots left. So why should you get one of the last spots? So you're going to be using some urgency. They're going to give you a reason. They're going to sell you on the reason why they should get access early to when you're launching it. You're going to acknowledge what they said. Basically here, like if, if they're selling themselves on why they should get the spot, they're going to want to join because it's FOMO, right? What I think you're trying to get out of the community will be great for helping you reach your fitness goals and losing 20 pounds. Here's a link to join. Send them the school link, purchase page. And then you want to follow up with them if they don't purchase after 15 minutes. Didn't see you in the group yet, James. Need to get you set up with next steps to get you in shape and get you on the right path for your fitness journey, whatever it is their goal is. And then after an hour, hit them up. And then after one day, before you said you were struggling with, whatever they said that they were struggling with right here, did something change? Basically, it's just like your last attempt to get them to, to respond and join after a day. You want to follow up, money's in the follow-ups. People will follow off and then you just hit them up and respond. Speed is king. You're not a bot if you're responding fast. Like, you literally just sit in the DMs and respond. Money is made through speed. So be active, be looking out for DMs, and you'll make some bread. Close some deals. So, that's how you close in the DMs for this. And that's the cool thing about this as well is like, you don't have to hop on sales calls, make money. You literally can just sit on your phone and, like, now that you have all this set up, you have an offer, you have a client, you've done market research, you figured out what their audience wants, you've built up a skeleton for your school. We're going to teach you how to become traffic wizard, is like what I, what I like to call it. It's called traffic wizardry. I'm going to teach you how to control the creator's traffic. So, they have an audience, they get a lot of attention, and we're going to control that attention and get as many people as possible to go watch that sales letter and then get into the DM so you can close as many people as possible and make money. This is the sauce that's really going to help you get to like that 10k a month mark. The best way to do this is through your pinned videos. So on short form content, you can like pin a TikTok and even on Reels, you can pin videos. The best way to set up this content funnel, which I'm going to break down, is through your three pinned videos. And so your three videos need to have a purpose. So everyone has like regular TikToks, right? Except for the pinned one. You're going to make three videos specifically meant to sell. And these are another sales letters in a TikTok. So you're going to pin videos with a purpose. I'm going to break down what that looks like. You're going to get people from the TikTok you're going to tell them to check out your pin videos are going to be like a nice little sales letter put together. And then it's going to tell them to go check out your Instagram, go check out the sales letter, go DM you for it and push them to your Instagram. So don't just pin a video because it's your most viral video. I see a lot of people do that. They're like, Oh, look, this video got the most views. Let me just pin that. So people can see that they don't care about that. You want them to see a video that's made specifically to get them to take an action. You need to make mini TikTok sales letters, which is basically a TikTok intended to sell your audience on taking an action, which that action is just going down your funnel. And these videos will have value on the front end and then a really hard CTA at the end to DM you. And so, so this is the structure that I've used, just like a normal TikTok disguised sales letter. Like I, like I said earlier, that like most videos are sales letters, right? Nowadays, everyone wants you to do something, right? Hook, social proof. Here's three tips about growth operating. Here's three tips about weight loss. Your call to action. I'm not check out my free school for more. It would be like DM me on IG for my free guide about X, Y, and Z. Or DM me on IG for more help about whatever. Check out my IG for more help about whatever. You're going to pin videos like this. They have CTAs at the end to DM you. If they want more help with whatever it may be. And then to push people 
people down the funnel, you got the regular TikToks, you got the pin TikToks. You're going to use a 7 to 1 content strategy. I like to call it like the TikTok triangle. So basically what this means is one out of every 10 videos the creator's posting is intended to go viral and be really broad. Really just broad videos, viral content. If the creator already has success making viral content, just tell them to replicate whatever has worked. Then two out of 10 videos is intended to build a relationship and trust with your audience. So that's more personal, telling more stories about yourself and how you did certain things. And then seven out of 10 are specific to industry and show you are an expert in the field. They're just educating, right? Providing a ton of value. And the seven credibility videos need to have a CTA at the end. And the best CTAs that I found, the best call to action, basically what you're telling them to do at the end of the video is just to watch the rest of your videos for more help or more information about fitness or whatever it may be, or watch my pin video if you want to learn more about weight loss or whatever, whatever your offer is, right? So tell them to watch the rest of your videos or watch your pin video. And what that will do is they'll find the creator on their for you page, right? Oh, wow, this is a great video, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like they're going to watch the video. And then at the end, it's like, watch the rest of my videos for more help. You're just going to like swipe right, right? They're on the creator's page. They might read the bio. They might click the link. But what they're really probably going to do is just watch the pin videos. You're going to watch the pin video. This is the first video they see. They're going to click on it. And that pin video is going to tell them to go DM them on IG for more help. And so a certain amount of people that watch those videos will DM you. You start getting a lot of DMs. And it'll be passive because once you make those three videos, the creators has to make more of these seven credibility triangles. Seven out of 10, two out of 10, one out of 10. So once you have the three VSL videos made, you can just start pumping a ton of these and you'll get a lot of traffic. Not you send what controlling traffic is and what a TikTok VSL is. I'm going to show you an example of how I did this. Now we're booking sales calls from this. It was a slightly different funnel, but it's the same process. Like I got a ton of people come down our funnel doing this, right? And we actually got a ton of DMs because we were just booking sales calls in the DM. So like I said, there is one viral video out of 10 videos, two trusted videos out of 10 videos, and then seven credibility ones. And so I actually had this video pop off, go viral. I kind of knew it was a viral topic and I posted it and it did like really well. I didn't expect it to do that well, but I saw the opportunity and I created a funnel out of it. And so this video got 17 million views, right? And it was pretty off topic. It had nothing to do. Like, I don't like this had nothing to do about like what I do. Right. But it, it went viral. Right. And I had no CT at the end. Verified. I didn't tell them to do anything at the end. It was super off topic. But what I did to control traffic and actually turn all these views into money, because if I didn't, I wouldn't have made any money. But uh, what I did is I, I replied to, I think this comment with the video. And in this video, this was a top comment. I replied with this video and then I provided some value. I was a little funny, showed my personality. And at the end, I told them to follow. So I dropped a CTA and then that already got people to go check out the rest of my content. And then the third video, what I did was actually have a CTA to get people to go DM me, right? This AI technology. So how to make an extra five to 10K a month using AI, right? And so this video had a lot of value. I showed people and then at the end, a business offer the service to business owners and take a fee per call that you get booked. And if you need more calls booked, DM me leads on IG and I'll send you the free guide I made on how to book more calls through TikTok. And I promise you it's not an AI responding or is it? I did that, right? This video got a ton of views and this was pinned on my TikTok for a while. And I got a lot of people DM me because they saw this video, then they watched this video, then they watched this video and I used the, the content funnel correctly. That's an example. And so if you do that right, like you're gonna get a lot of people like DM you and you're gonna have a lot of opportunity to sell people into the community. And so once you start selling people into the community to retain people, you can use this, which is the fulfillment diamond, which is basically just all the parts of fulfillment that you're gonna have within your community. So you're gonna have a community. So you wanna continue improving and focusing on the community. You're gonna host events. So like right now we're holding a challenge where we have a giveaway. I think for the most active members in the community, we support. So we, people have access to calls, people have access to DMing us, people have access to like our number and stuff. They wanna hit us up and ask us questions. And then there's a classroom with the course modules. And so you just want to make sure that you're expanding on all of these and continually improving these and getting feedback from people in the community and updating stuff and doing more market research. Like market research can be done within the community, asking them like, yo, why'd you buy this? What is valuable about this? What should I change about this? And just keep adding that. And when people see that you're actively trying to improve the community, how to scale to 10K a month once you got this set up. So once you like have a creator, scaling to 10K a month honestly comes insanely fast. I'm going to show you guys. So actually, first thing I'm going to do, someone who scaled to 10K a month within my free community, this guy here, me and my business partner just launched the community and made 11K in the first 24 hours of launching. 11K in 24 hours, right? Sharif here is working with some growth operators. He's a creator. And within the first month, they got to 11.7K from launching the VSL and content strategy. He got 3.4 million views that month and they got to 11.7K per month and they're crushing it. Justin and Ruben, they were like lost, uncertain, and they both hit 10K a month on the same weekend. And these are two separate pairs of growth operators working with the creators. So Ruben and Justin here were working with Ira, who I showed you. And with actually within two weeks of launching the community, they got got to 14.5K per month. Ira got to 14.5K working with their growth operators in two weeks. Carson Rashad got to 11K a month in a month. Sharif is the creator for them. Andrea, 18, got to 12K a month in 38 days. And he actually just hit 20K a month as well, like five days after I recorded this video. James Nizer got to 20K a month in five months. He's 17. So look, the information in this free course genuinely has the power to completely change your life. And so I hope that you went through this and that you took notes. And I hope you got some value out of this. If you did, I would greatly appreciate if you
you go ahead and just smash that subscribe button and that like button. If you have any questions that are unanswered, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'd greatly appreciate some feedback. But yeah, like I said, there's people that have completely changed their lives from this information. And I really hope that you are one of them as well. Go ahead, if you haven't already, register for the free class that happens every single week on Wednesday where I go through live and teach you about growth operating and I answer questions as well. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out and let's go make some money.